back to DXB Today, where today we are taking, well, a good look at the e-gaming, the e-sports landscape here in the UAE. So what have we had? We've had the investor, we've had the influencer. What now about, well, the inspiration, the inspirers out there who are looking to use uh, e-gaming, e-sports to educate the generations of the future? Well, that's exactly what our next guest is doing. He's the CEO of Minatech Entertainment. Here's Mario Perez, who joins us live here in the studio. Thanks for joining us, Mario. Thank you for inviting me. Really, really appreciate it because this is an element we really want to get into here. Yeah, a lot of people will see e-gaming as entertainment. You know, my, ch my children are spending too much time gaming at the moment. They're not spending enough time outside throwing a ball around, etc. But the, 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 the landscape has progressed to such, uh, in su at such pace over the last few years. How do we now turn that and the knowledge we have into the education of children for the future? Is there, is there, are there links between the two? Definitely. So that is our focus. We are what we're trying to to show is that there is more to gaming than just playing. Yeah. There is a, a, a huge team of developers uh, on the back. Uh, there is a huge team of designers, video editors. Um, just like here in the in the show, where we have people handling cameras. We have people uh, managing tournaments. Uh, we have people developing the tournaments, the tournament platforms themselves. So. Um, it's not just about the gamer, though. Exactly. All the tertiary industry as well. Exactly, and that is that is what we try through through the different initiatives that we launch. And for example, the Amazon University Esports Project that we handle here in the UAE, which is a national competition for universities. What we try is to involve those students to show them that there is more to gaming than just playing. Nice. Now, Mario, there's a lot of people who are developing their own games, and it's amazing how accessible it's all become. However, I think people are really I imagine people are really struggling to, to make that shift between developing, coming up with a concept, developing the game, publishing it, but then how do you market? How do you make sure people actually see it, know about it, play, play it? How, what kind of advice do you have? I mean, is that something that you tackle? Uh, well, developing a game requires a lot of effort. Not everyone can just uh, create a, a game. It requires a lot of uh, people to get involved into it. Um, I believe Lucy was saying before that uh, there were not enough games being localized here in the, in the market. So each market has its own uh, way of uh, reaching that audience, right? Uh, we've seen that here in the MENA region, uh, the, the growth of those uh, gamers is huge. Uh, and, uh, and that is something that haven't been unnoticed by the publishers, that by the main publishers worldwide. So those publishers are more and more localizing every content that they create uh, for this region, localizing it, translating it, uh, even putting that, uh, the Arab world into their games uh, to give it that, uh, that um, local vibe mm. of the game. And how about marketing it though? How do you take that step from creating, establishing, coming up with a fantastic game? How do you make sure people here see it and play it? And I don't know, how do you attract everyone? It feels well, like such a big... <laughs> Yes, it's huge, and and uh, there are many factors. I mean, uh, esports is one way of uh, of creating that history around the game and marketing it, and 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 putting it out there for people to follow, create the stars uh, uh, for gamers to follow and want to become them, right? Uh, another one is through content creators like uh, like Mohammed was here before. Getting people um, to push it. Yeah, right. and uh, so there are different ways to reach that audience and and engaging with them. Uh, but uh, obviously the, ba the base has to be a, a, a very good game uh, and if you create something that can engage locally with that audience by, I don't know, creating a, um, uh, we've seen a, lo a lot of games lately, creating uh, characters from the region uh, with uh, like an Egyptian character or a, or a Saudi character or a UAE character and giving them that a specific uh, local uh, connection, that always helps. Mario, just following on the Dina's points about business, it's so important, and I, I love the tie-in with all the universities. You've got 130 now, I think. In the Regional, region. yes. That's awesome. Um, but th there's a terminology called the gamer premier, mm -hmm. and it's natural that if you're a gamer, you understand that whole industry, so you understand what appeals, therefore you can create a game, become an entrepreneur. But how are you working with the universities to really build up the business acumen. That, that's really important, I think. So our focus is to engage with university students, right? Uh, and involve them any way they want to get involved. 
if they are passionate about gaming, if they're passionate about competing, um, they, can, they can jump in any way they want. Uh, if they are very good at gaming or, 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 or playing, uh, they can create their own team, they can engage with us uh, sure. through, through that competitive and, and And let me just elaborate, yeah. sorry, and, and I totally get it on the eSports side, mm -hmm. but what if I want to build a peripheral, um, you know, when I build a new mouse, um, or I, I want to come up with a new product, can the universities help also? Can, is there some way that you could tie it in that way? Well, more and more now the universities are looking for ways to create curriculum around gaming. Exactly. Uh, whether it's broadcasting, focused on gaming, uh, there is a lot of tools now to, that you can actually become a broadcaster or, or a content creator from home. And they are professional tools uh, and even free tools. Uh, for, for uh, uh, platforms like Twitch and um, YouTube and all these uh, uh, platforms that are focused or have a strong focus on gaming. Uh, so they teach you how to create content a lot more professionally. Clear your background, clear your voice. Um, and, and obviously in this kind of curriculum, how to speak fluently, how to manage yourself in front of a camera, right? So they are more and more looking to create a specific courses focused on gaming because design, general design and design in gaming, it's, it's not the same. When you have a, a, a specific course for gaming, it gives you the tools to actually create content that is going to help you engage with that specific audience. That's great. That's great. And, and I mean, I, I guess we've got also best practices from abroad too though, right? Are, are you using best practices from other universities? Yes, I mean, uh, or, or um, we're handling projects across uh, over 25 uh, different markets uh, across the world. So um, that is some, it, this is a, a global project that we're handling, the university project, the eSports, the Amazon University eSports, is something that we're doing in so many markets. And that is what actually give us the possibility to give the students to create a, a path to pro, right? Because you can engage with your peers, with your student friends uh, uh, in college, then qualify nationally. If you win nationally, then you go to the MENA finals and then that connects to international. Mm -hmm. So we're creating a path to pro to give them the chance to, even though this is amateur, uh, we're giving them the chance to feel like a star, like feel like the pros. Mario, thank you so much for all your insight and your advice. I'm sure everyone watching has been really, really grateful. It's been a very informative session. If you can stay put right there, we are gonna shift the spotlight over to you two ladies, Amy and Lucy for DXV in 60. Yes, indeed. So Lucy, obviously okay. you've given us some incredible insight into the world of gaming and obviously some amazing knowledge about your new book, but we want to get to know you a little bit better. So we've got 60 <coughs> seconds. We're going to put them on the clock and I'm going to ask some quick fire questions okay. to you. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. 60 seconds on the clock, please. And let's go. If you weren't an investor or author, what would you be doing? Uh, a board director. One thing that you cannot live without? Coffee. Your motto in life and work? Always be kind. I like that. <laughs> what was your first job? Um, I worked at McDonald's. Okay. And your hidden gem in Dubai? Oh, uh, definitely El Cal. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you could choose one superpower, what would it be? Um, probably to turn back time. Okay, that's a good one. I would like that one too. Your inspiration. <laughs> I'm saying again? Your inspiration. Um, my son. A book that you're reading at the moment. Um, actually, uh, it's, uh, I'm moderating this one in, at the Emirates Lit Fest, Surrounded by Vampires. Okay. Top series that you've watched recently? A talk series? A top series. A top series. Um, the, the, uh, the Night Shift. Okay, and last question, the time has just run out, but why Dubai? Um, because you can be and do anything in this amazing country. You definitely can. Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to get to know you a bit better. <laughs> yeah, big thanks, Lucy. Thanks for guest co-hosting for us. Really much appreciate your time today. Big thanks to Mario as well for joining us. All the best with the new ventures here as well. Uh, still plenty to come here on DXB today. In fact, our very interesting here has been down to Lucy's hidden gem, hidden no longer, down at Elsa Carl, <laughs> down to the fridge to check out and catch up with, find out a bit more about our artist tonight, 
Jay Abbo. What's up, everybody? I'm Jay Abbo, and this next song is a song called Movie. Uh, it's a song about a, uh, a, a someone that I was interested in in the past, and me wondering whether it was only the way that she looked that uh, was interesting to me rather than what was inside, you know, what, what, what she was like, what her personality was like. And that's why there's the line, uh, you're like a movie, but can you move me? Uh, and that's what the song is about. So stay tuned right here on DXB Today for Movie.